Uh, hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the determination of uh, minimum expressions using essential prime implicants. And we'll talk about what are the prime implicants and essential prime implicants and how um, can we use them to write the minimum solution of the function. So we know that um, a term in the function is called a prime implicant if it cannot be combined with any other term to eliminate a variable. So if we have a Carnot map here, so this Carnot map uh, method is one way to find the prime implicants and essential prime implicants. Um, the other way to find them is to use Queen McCloskey method and I will link the video in the description box down below about Queen McCloskey. So this is another method, which is the Carnot map method to find um, the prime implicant and essential prime implicant. So if this is our um, Carnot map for function f, which is a function of four variables a, b, c, and d, and then my function is um, like this. So these are the ones in my function. Okay, so we know that we have to loop these ones in order to write the um, realization of f, which is a function of a, b, c, and d. Okay, so as an example, we cannot say that this loop here is a prime implicant. Why? Because this loop can be combined with this loop in order to um, get rid of a variable. So for example, these two loops, if I want to write their um, functions, so this one will be a, b, c, and then this one is a, b prime, c, right? So if I combine these two terms, a, b, c, or a, b prime, c, I'm going to get a, c. So you see that I could um, combine these two terms and get rid of variable b and b prime, okay? So these two are not prime implicants, okay? So what are the Im prime implicants here? I can say that this loop here gives me one prime implicant. Why? Because I cannot combine this loop with another loop in order to get rid of any variable. Okay, so this is one um, prime implicant. And the other prime implicant that we have will be these four ones, right? And also these two ones are one prime implicant. Also, you see that there is this loop here in which I cannot combine this loop with any other loop in order to get rid of a variable. So it will uh, count as a prime implicant. Okay, let's see if we have others. So also this loop here is a prime implicant because I cannot combine it with any other loop to get rid of any variables, right? Now let's see if, for example, if this loop here is a prime implicant or not. So this purple loop that you can see here, it is representing A, B, D prime, right? What if I combine this loop with these two ones that are in a loop? So then that would be A, B, D. So clearly you can see that I can combine these two and get rid of variable D. So these purple ones, the purple loops that I drew in this map are not prime implicants, okay? But for example, that um, this loop here, you cannot combine it with any other loop to get rid of a variable. All right.
And we also know that this loop here is a prime implicant because I cannot find any other group of ones to combine it with this one in order to get rid of a variable. Okay, so here I will write all prime implicants. So necessarily all the prime implicants are not in the minimum sum of product. Okay, so maybe we'll use just some of them, but we are sure that all the terms that we have in the minimum sum of product, they are prime implicants. Okay, but necessarily they're not all of the prime implicants that we have. So let me number these loops so I can refer to them. So this one is number one, this one number two, and then this one number three, number four, number five, and this one is number six. So I will start from group or loop number one so the prime um, this is basically all prime implicants okay so loop number one it is representing b prime c d loop number two is a c loop number three will be a b loop number four is um, b c prime loop number five will be a prime c prime d loop number six and the last one is a prime b prime d okay so these are the six um, prime implicants that i have in this carnal map Okay, so this was the method to use the Carnot map in order to find all the prime implicants. Now, let's find the essential prime implicants. So, first of all, you should know that the essential prime implicants will be in the minimum sum of products. It means that if I have three essential prime implicants, they are for sure appearing in the minimum sum of products. Okay. So what is an essential prime implicant? So the essential prime implicant is a prime implicant, is a min term basically, um, which is covered only by one prime implicant. Okay. What do I mean by that? Um, as an example, okay, let's look at, for example, this one here. So you see that this one is being covered by one and two different prime implicants. So this is not an essential prime implicant. So I will look for the ones that are only covered by one prime implicant. So clearly we can see that, um, let me change the color. So you can see that this one here is covered only by loop number two. So it is only covered by one min term, uh, by sorry, one prime implicant. And this one here is also covered by only um, one prime implicant. So that one prime implicant that is covering that single one is called the essential prime implicant. So basically here, loop number two and loop number four are my essential prime implicants. Okay, so we look for a one that is covered with only one prime implicant, and then we call that one prime implicant our essential prime implicant. Okay, and we said that in the minimum sum of products, um, we have all the essential prime implicants. Okay, so as I said, number loop number two and loop number four will be my essential prime implicants. So loop number two, it was A and C, right? A, C. And group number four, loop number four is B, C prime. 
So these two are my essential prime implicants. Oops. An essential prime implicant. But this doesn't mean that we are finished with the minimum sum of product. So you know that in the minimum sum of product, you should cover all the ones inside the map. Okay, so with these two essential um, prime implicants, I have covered all the ones inside this loop, number four, and all the ones inside loop number two. So I do have two ones left that are these two ones. So I can use this loop, which is my loop number six, as my other prime implicant that is appearing inside the minimum sum of products. So that loop is A prime, B prime, D, which is a prime implicant. It is not a um, essential prime implicant. You can write it here. All right, so this is how we find the minimum sum of products okay um, so if you have any questions about prime implicants and essential prime implicants you can uh, leave your question in the comments down below and I will also add um, the link to Queen McCloskey video and you can learn another method to find the prime implicants and essential prime implicants and thanks for watching